Next on BBC World News, a load of old rubbish. And I'm not talking about weekend world. I'm instead looking forward to Horizons tackling the rather smelly subject head-on. Just how will cities cope with an extra billion tonnes of waste per year up to 2025? As landfill sites fill up and the pressure to reduce greenhouse gases increases, Adam Shaw and Simon Mosin have been travelling the world to find that the answers may lie on our roads, in our kitchens and even in our gardens. I'm on a journey right around the world. We're talking to people who are trying to tackle some of the biggest challenges mankind is facing over the next decade. Welcome to Horizons. With an increasingly overcrowded planet, increasing affluence and more consumption, what to do with the ever-growing mountain of waste will be one of the major challenges in the coming decade. Globally, the amount of solid waste material generated in urban areas annually has almost doubled over the past decade. And as city populations continue to grow, experts estimate a further increase of nearly 1 billion tonnes per year by 2025. With space for landfill sites running out and tighter regulations on greenhouse gas emissions from waste incineration, it's clear we have to find better, indeed, more sustainable ways of dealing with our waste. Later, Saima is in Bangalore, where they're making roads out of waste plastic. One of the fastest developing nations in the world with a population of over 1 billion and growing. India's waste production looks set to grow significantly in the years ahead. The city of Bangalore generates around 5,000 tonnes of mixed waste every single day, from broken TVs to plastic containers. Most of it strewn across the streets or it ends up on mountainous landfill sites. That, though, isn't the case for all of it. Around 50 tonnes of this daily discard actually has an interesting new afterlife. Plastic is collected, shredded and eventually turned into roads. This is the start of the plastic road process. We're off to collect ourselves some plastic. More than 1,500 kilometres of new roads or resurfaced old ones now contain discarded bags, bottles and cartons, absorbing thousands of tonnes of plastic waste in the process. For every kilometre of road, two tonnes of plastics required. Right, so this is it. This is where it all starts at the beginning of the day. They're going to take all the plastic out of this and make use of it, make roads out of it. As well as the auto rickshaws are bin women or bin men that collect everyone's household waste every morning. Now KK Plastics pays them six rupees a kilo to segregate the waste and collect plastic. So we've collected all of our plastic and we brought it to the factory for the next step. <laughs> Mr Khan, I've been out with your boys this morning collecting all of this plastic for you. <laughs> so what happens with it once it gets here? Uh, we take this into a cleaning mission. <laughs> so they're literally taking all of this rubbish yeah. Spins round. These machines clean the littered bags, bottles and food packaging with blasts of air. The aim of the tumble dryers is to remove foreign particles. Out of this we'll make flakes. 
and that flakes will be taken to the plant. Another one plant is there where it will be mixed with the bitumen. The plastic is mixed with asphalt at 150 degrees Celsius to produce polymerized bitumen. The plastic acts as a binding agent, helping road surfaces hold together better at higher temperatures. And since plastic is water resistant, the roads don't get waterlogged, have fewer potholes and need repairs less frequently than conventional roads. And where did the idea of using the plastic bags in roads come from? See, we had some basic fundamental knowledge about plastic, how it is uh, produced. So ultimately, this is a petroleum product. Plastic is a petroleum product. Again, bitumen is a petroleum product. Though we thought, uh, yes, uh, if uh, plastic could go into bitumen, it would be a good idea. What are the benefits of mixing plastic with bitumen? See, one aspect is it definitely improves the performance of the road. That is the, the longevity of the road. Second thing is the very plastic was a problem. It was a big challenge to municipal solid waste. If this is not eliminated or removed at source or from the garbage, the whole garbage would not convert into biofertilizers. Can this process be emulated or adapted for another country or completely lifted and you could build a road exactly in the same way yes. anywhere in the world? Yes, yeah, we could, we can, we can, we can. I went to see how this innovation is literally being rolled out across the city. I wouldn't stand in my way if I were them. Plastic roads are more durable than bitumized surfaces. They dry quickly and can be used within a few hours of laying. Polymerized bitumen is not a new compound and has been used for paving in places other than India. Typically, it's mixed with new plastic, making it an expensive venture with no environmental benefits. Mr. Khan's innovation was one of the first in India to use waste plastic. these roads compare with the old ones you were using? The life expectancy of a road from two years does increase to five years. How much does an average road cost to build in the city of Bangalore? The cost is around 30 million per kilometer. 30 million rupees. Yeah, 30 million. And how much is it with the addition of the top layer of plastic? That is about 0.6% increase in the overall cost of the construction of the road. Just 0.6%? 0.6%, yes. Do you think it's worth that cost? Sure, it is really worth it. Worth it to use plastics in roads. The Goan government has rolled out plastic roads. The city of Pune is also looking at the technology. Getting more state government agencies involved is key to its success in India. Reusing some of the estimated 50 tons of daily discarded plastic in Bangalore is so far proving to build stronger and longer-lasting roads. 